When most people think of the huts and hut power, they tend to think of the crime lords that typically operated throughout the galaxy. This began with the end of the hut civil wars that left their homeworld, Varl, in ruins. While it's true that this event, part of what's known as the hut cataclysms, made the huts eschew traditional military power and turn towards exercising economic power in both legitimate and illegitimate ways, this doesn't tell the whole story. My first video on this channel actually outlined the history of Hut military power, and particularly their rearmament after the Yuuzhan Vong War, but the Huts actually did maintain a military force throughout their entire history, and today I wanted to talk about what form that took in the Imperial period. So what did a Hut fleet look like and what was it used for? The Empire would never have tolerated an actual military rival arising in the galaxy without doing something to face it head on, but there were still several states that operated independent military forces in the galaxy. The key there was never being so much of a threat that the Empire felt the need to intervene. The Havens were one such example that flew largely below the Empire's radar, to the point that Imperials would joke about military commands within the Empire that exercised strong discipline but never actually saw combat as being a Hapen fleet, according to the Essential Atlas. The Hapens, while definitely strong in their own right, didn't really have the power to challenge the Empire in any real sense on a galactic scale. The Huts, however, did exercise a lot of economic power. For them, there was an intentional decision to operate in a way that emphasized their economic power, allowed them to pay taxes to the Empire, and still have a military that would have been enough for their own defense, but wasn't actually a huge threat to the Empire that they would feel the need to crack down on. Understanding the core of Hut military strength in this context requires talking a bit about the astrography of Hut space. Generally, people are familiar with the overall Hut capital of Nalhutta, home of the Hut ruling council, where leaders of the various Hut clans would gather. While Nalhutta was certainly important, the true core of Hut territory lay in a secretive region known as Bhutana Hutta, or the Garden of the Huts, accessed along a trade route known as the Pabul Hutta through the fortified gate worlds like Mulatan. This region was home to the Hut throne worlds, essentially the homeworlds of different Hut clans, from the currently important ones like the Desilijic clan of Jabba the Hut and the Basadii clan of Durga the Hut, down to other older or smaller clans whose influence outside of Bhutana Hutta had all but evaporated over the millennia. While inter clan competition and conflict was common in the galaxy, within Bhutana Hutta, direct conflicts were nearly unheard of. Hut warships, a rare sight in the galaxy at large, and even within Hut space generally, were relatively common within Bhutana Hutta. Outsiders have little idea what happens in this heavily protected place, if they even know it exists. But to the Huts, this was the true home of their civilization, and it was what they always aimed to protect. Most clans would have had some level of military presence in Bhutana Hutta. However, there was one singular clan which alone controlled a third of all Hut warships in Bhutana Hutta, the Kunalak clan. Though nowhere near as economically powerful as other clans like the Desilijic or Basadii, this clan led by Marlow the Hut during the Clone Wars and beyond, staked most of its reputation and influence within the Huts on its military might and its role in protecting the Bhutana Hutta. They did, of course, still partake in running gambling rings, protection rackets, and piracy, why wouldn't they? Other Huts tended to look at the Kunalak as being in the tradition of the ancient Hut warriors from the time of their wars with Zim the Despot, but in reality they were still more akin to their contemporary partners than their warlike ancestors. It was the work of Marlow the Hut and the Kunalak that kept the Shadow Collective from getting access to the Hut fleets, protected as they were in the Bataan Hutta during the Clone Wars. On multiple occasions, the Hut showed their true priority lay in protecting the throne worlds in the Garden over any action in defense of even their capital system, Nal Hutta, which may evoke stronger responses from galactic governments of the day like the Republic or the Empire. During the Empire, there was an attack by Imperial forces on Nar Shadda, which was the moon of Nal Hutta. Rather than mobilize a larger fleet and risk a bigger response from the Empire, they left this entirely alone and it was fought off by a bunch of smugglers, essentially, including Han Solo and Lando Calrissian. Not a single actual Hut warship was mobilized to confront the Empire here. So again, we get a picture where, as long as Bhutana Hutta was protected, really anything could happen to the rest of Hut space. Ideally, some smugglers or mercenaries would deal with any incursions or they'd be able to buy off attackers but they wouldn't risk taking an action that might put Bhutana Hutta at risk. The actual structure of the Hut fleet was somewhat different than a traditional military as well. Rather than the Hut fleet being a single organized entity, each Khajiitic or Hut clan had its own independent military structure, ships, vehicles, and weapons. Typically, individual ships were actually operated by individual powerful Huts on their own terms, often negotiating agreements if more than a few ships under different commands were needed. 
The defense of Bhutan Hutta, though, was a more organized effort, and it was a shared universal goal of all the Hutt clans. So, for example, rather than just having Kunalak fleets protecting Kunalak worlds or Dasilogic fleets protecting Dasilogic worlds, Hutt defense fleets would patrol different areas and they were often rotated through in order to ensure that complacency and corruption didn't take hold. Whatever rivalries extended beyond Butanahata between all the different Hutt clans, none of that would be allowed to impact the overall defense of the worlds within Butanahata. We do get one example of a task force within the Lords of Nelhutta sourcebook by Fantasy Flight Games, where a lot of this information comes from, where there's a profile of a commander by the name of Trunal the Hutt, who regularly patrols near Mulatan, one of the gate worlds to the Butanahata. Trunal's force includes his flagship, a dreadnought class named Agrel Kuhalta, or Aggressive Defender, and nine other Corellian gunships. The book describes this as a small fleet and mentions Trunal forces expand and contract with negotiate agreements with other forces when necessary. While these ships aren't especially exciting and come from other places in the galaxy, they're pretty common, dreadnoughts show up pretty much everywhere, we do know the huts themselves designed or bought other specific designs, especially from companies like Mandel Motors, who produced several fighters for them, and Ubrickian Industries, which made frigates like the Cossack class, which never gets an official design. There are even some ships described in Lords of Nelhutta as being made on Nelhutta itself, like the Dorbula class warship. Later on, as I covered in my original video, we do know the Hutt fleets expanded considerably, as more clans went more towards the Kunalak clan's way of thinking after nearly being wiped out by the Yuzan Vong. Hutt ships became a far more common sight in not just Butanahata, and not just Hutt space, but the galaxy at large, and they even joined the military of the Corellian Confederacy, breaking away from the Galactic Alliance. With a bunch of new Hutt originated warship designs like the Tarada class, the Chalandian class, and the Batil. During the Yuzon Vong War, Hut Space was brought to near destruction, but they were able to fight back and resist Yuzon Vong biotechnology in the end, with rumors saying that they used other secret technology within Butanahara to survive. So while after the Yuzon Vong War we entered a new era of Hut militarization that hadn't been seen for millennia before, it wasn't the case that there was no Hut military before this point and under the Empire. That's going to do it for our look at the Hutt military. It's always been a pretty interesting area to me, so I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, consider leaving a like or subscribing for more, and if you'd like to read more about the Hutts, I do recommend the Lords of Nelhada sourcebook by Fantasy Flight Games. Really, when you want to get into weird little bits of obscure lore, the sourcebooks for all the different Star Wars tabletop games are the best place to go in my opinion. They have a bunch of topics that don't really get covered in the novels or the movies, because usually they're not super relevant to any specific story. If there's other topics you'd like to see me cover on the channel, please leave them in the comments as well. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next time.